2015 saw the triumphant return of the Mad Max franchise when Fury Roads hit screens. After years of false starts, George Miller brought back the gritty and ruthless world of Mad Max. Help us, Mad. You promised to help us. Thus, the time was right to have another go at getting a proper Mad Max game off the ground. Just like the film, Full Starts had played the potential title for years, which is odd because the franchise is so clearly game material. There's no doubt many games have been directly influenced by Mad Max. It's plain to see in games like Fallout, Rage and Borderlands. With so many imitators, Mad Max deserved its own shot. Warner Brothers Entertainment clearly agreed. And if you're going to make a Mad Max game, the open world genre is the first one that comes to mind. The world building of the movies is brilliant, so to be able to drop you right in the middle of one is an exciting proposition. As such, Warner Brothers needed a studio with a strong open world pedigree. And in Avalanche Studios, the creators of the Just Cause franchise, they had just that. So, over many years, Avalanche created a huge Mad Max world for players to explore, and better yet, they gave players the Magnus Opus, a fully customizable car to explore it in. The focus on the car, the thing that gets you from point A to B, was a great design choice. You can fast travel in the game, but this is a game that makes you think, why the hell would I do that? I want to try out my new upgrades and my new look. And on your travels, the game delivers brilliant and bombastic immersion car combat. Just take a look. Avalanche made a solid and fun open world game. See, it doesn't always turn out that way. When movie studios want a game alongside their big budget film, you can end up with some real dross. Thankfully, crappy movie tie-in games are not as prevalent as they used to be. Warner Brothers themselves learned that lesson after the massive failure of Batman Begins, followed by the huge success of Batman Arkham Asylum. To quote Peter Weiss, the Vice President of Production and Development of Warner Brothers, it's a lesson we've taken to heart at Warner Brothers. We don't build games that are based on movies. So even though this game is going to come out in the same year as the new movie, it was its own thing, starring its own Max with its own original story. Avalanche's production and scope was not limited by the movie in any way. The problem for Avalanche Studios and Warner Brothers though, was 2015 was not a quiet year for massive open world games. In the months surrounding Mad Max's release, Metal Gear Solid 5, Fallout 4 and Witcher 3 all hit shelves. Mad Max is a big franchise, but in the gaming world, these are real big hitters. Oh, that's rough. My sympathies. Don't get me wrong, the game is good, but in a year of such competition, it's hard to see why Mad Max's target audience would pick it over the competition. The game takes easily 50 plus hours to beat. I'm not sure the game is that good to command that much mindshare and attention in such a crowded year. So what's the solution? Well, in the game, when you leave the boundaries of the world set by the developers, you agree with the message, warning, you are entering the big nothing. Carry on that way and it's game over. So many open world games feel like you've entered the big nothing right off the bat. There's lots of things to tick off the map, things to upgrade and side missions to complete. But they lack real substance, they get so repetitive, there are only so many landmines you can defuse and camps you can clear before you get burnt out. The illusion of a real, living and breathing world quickly collapses. I'm not saying Mad Max is the biggest offender that's ever been of this, but in the face of such competition, what if Mad Max combated this problem by just scaling down the scope of the game? Why not make a game that delivered the open world experience, but half the size of the map and half the time it took to beat? There's no reason a game half the size would lose its immersion or fun gameplay. As it was, half the game is what most players saw anyway. According to the PS4 trophy stats, only 0.9% of players did everything there was to do in the game, earning the platinum, and only 27% finished the final story mission. Heck, only half of the players made it past chapter 2. Make a smaller game, reduce production times and costs, and offer something different to your competitors. Say to players, this is an open world gameplay experience that doesn't waste your time. This is an open world you can see through to the end. Don't get me wrong, this wasn't a glaring mistake by Avalanche, but with 2020 hindsight vision, it's just something worth considering. What really happened was, the Mad Max game came out five months after the movie. It missed the zeitgeist and it received little fanfare. All its competitors did better commercially and critically. 
In fact, Avalanche themselves released Just Cause 3, the third installment in their flagship franchise, just three months after Mad Max. They gave the same audience they were chasing yet another open world game to choose over Mad Max. They ate their own bloody lunch. I don't know what would have happened if Mad Max dared to do something different. Perhaps a budget open world game would be rejected out of hand by the market. Maybe making a game half the size in reality wouldn't have saved Avalanche enough money to be able to release a cheaper game anyway. Two years later, I still don't know what would happen if someone released a smaller open world experience. I've yet to see anyone brave enough or maybe stupid enough to find out. In the meantime, here's some more big nothings.